this one is <laughs> Bayesian flood frequency analysis. So we've talked a lot about the input. Now we're gonna dive a little bit more back into the actual um, analysis itself. Okay, so, <clears throat> so in this presentation, we're gonna discuss the Bayesian estimation analysis in BestFed. Uh, this is the process that is used to develop the flow frequency curves, of course. So we'll take a quick look at some of the math and the methods behind Bayesian estimation analysis and then show how to run the analysis itself. So after this lecture, you'll find that uh, you would like, if, if you find you'd like to know more, um, again, about the theory of the Bayesian analysis, we, we do offer that class. It'll be later, probably in June this year for the DSL 216 class, flood hazards for risk assessment. So best fit is of course the third project element of the course um, the, with the Bayesian estimation analysis. Um, it is the best in best fit. So this is again, the heart of the software and what really what makes the, the best fit an ideal software for flood hazards analysis. So best fit uh, performs a Bayesian estimation uh, by using uh, an efficient Markov chain Monte Carlo. If you wanna know more about that, I can, we can talk offline. So it's an algorithm to estimate the parameters and the uncertainty for the flood, flood the frequency curve given the input data and the type of distribution that you want. So most of the time will be LP3, right? So let's review the elements of a Bayesian estimation analysis before getting too much more. So we start by adding input data, like we've been talking about, right? So that's the systematic period of record, the, any historical or paleo flood, um, and any other thresholds. So this is entered as input data, which we've done in the workshops, um, and we've cut it in the presentations up to this point. So next is any prior information or knowledge we have about the parameters or our distribution uh, um, of the frequency curve. So there's two general categories of prior information available in BestFit. So there's prior distribution for the parameter value. Um, so that's like, Again, LP3, you have three parameters, mean, standard deviation, or skew. So it's like having prior information about the skew, regional skew, something like that. And then there's causal information um, for a quantile, which it typically means uh, an estimate of a flow at a given annual exceedance probability for another from another data source. So when no other information is available before, so prior to our analysis, we use an uninformative flat or uniform prior distribution. So it's kind of like that blue bar up there you see, it's just a nice uniform across the, across the whole path. Um, so conversely, when we have some information such as a regional skew estimate, we call this an informative prior. Um, informative priors allow us to include other sources of information in our analysis, such as like a regional skew. So uh, the, they provide additional information about the value of a parameter or the value of flow at a particular annual exceedance probability. So prior information can be obtained from regional analysis, um, like again, like the regional skew study or a precipitation frequency analysis, um, or even really expert elicitation if you, if you have it. Um, so BestFit uses Bayes' theorem, which can combine the input data and the prior information using a likelihood function. So the likelihood function is basically a measure of how well the frequency curve, um, def defined by a set of distribution parameters, how well it fits our data, or how well the data actually fits the parameters. But um, the, the parameter output from Bayes' theorem is a distribution of the parameters for a frequency curve. Uh, so this is called our posterior distribution. Let's get that pulled up here. So. The word posterior in this case means after our analysis. Pretty, pretty straightforward, I think, on that part. So a set of parameters that is most likely to fit our data is called the posterior mode. If you can cut that again, it's the most likely to fit our data. That's our posterior mode. If you look in best fit under the tabular data or the parameters data, it's the log likelihood, the one with the closest to zero log likelihood, so least negative. This is, com is the computed frequency curve. Uh, the credible intervals describe the uncertainty, of course, in our estimate of the frequency curve. So finally, the posterior predictive curve can be thought of as our uh, mean or expected flow frequency curve. The posterior predictive curve, of course, includes um, all the different types of uncertainty for our analysis and is the curve that should be used 
uh, as our best estimate frequency curve. So now let's take a quick look at MCMC. All right, using your best engineering judgment, which frequency curve has a higher likelihood or better fit given the observed data? You know, frequency curve A or B? Yeah, it's not really a trick question. So one of the things we wanna get across when you're talking likelihood, it should be very intuitive and what it's actually doing. So it should look like what you expect. So best fit does, you know, thousands and hundreds of thousands of likelihood um, tests and calculations like um, to get the, the most likely and also develop the, the posterior distribution. So Monte Carlo method is, a, you know, it's a well-established technique uh, that can be used to solve a variety of engineering problems. So here's, here's three types of problems we, we usually look at. So Monte Carlo method methods are good for solving optimization problems. So best fit is solving an optimization problem where we are trying to find the frequency curves that are a good fit for our data. So uh, another problem uh, that Monte Carlo methods can be used to solve is the value of an is the value of an integral. So or the area under a function, right? Uh, you'll sometimes see this technique used to calculate risk. And the final type of problem you see it in is uh, when we need to estimate a com estimate the combined uncertainty in the output of a model given uncertainty in the model input. This is the type of problem that we'll see in RFA and how it, how it solves. Um, so we'll see this later in the course, like day tomorrow or into, into the third day. So, so all Monte Carlo applications follow the kind of the same basic steps. So first we want to define a model. Um, so Bayes theorem is our basic, is basically our model for best fit. Um, and we will, then we assign a probability distribution to the model inputs. These are the prior distributions for our distribution parameters. As, and then we sample our model inputs based on their distribution. So again, in best fit, we, it uses an efficient MCMC technique to do the sampling, and often we're using you know, LP3. So for each sample, we then calculate the outputs for our models. This is basically the likelihood function in best fit, which gives us a measure of how well the sampled frequency curve fits our data. Uh, this process is repeated, of course, many, many times over. And finally, the, we process the results for all the samples. This gives us the posterior distribution at that point. So for, for the parameter estimates, the posterior mode, as well as the posterior predicted frequency curve and the credible intervals. So, all right, we, we've talked a little bit about Monte Carlo methods on, uh, you know, the past couple of slides. So now let's, let's, let's move towards the, the second part of the MC, the, the Markov chain. So Markov chain sampling is a little like, kind of think of it more like a board game that involves rolling dice or spinning a spinner, you know, maybe such as something like this, like shoots and ladders. So the roll of a die is random, right? It's, you just roll it, it's random. It has a probability distribution that will determine how much you move. You roll three, you move three. You roll six, you move six, right? But you also have a position on the board in shoots and ladders, right? You, you start at a position one, you roll a three, you move three spaces, all right? So, so basically, your next position on the board is based on your current position and the random result of a roll of a die. As you move through the game, your specific position on the board throughout the game starts to form a Markov, Markov chain. So hopefully that makes sense. So you start out somewhere, you make a random sample, sampling here, it's a die, and you move that way. Now you're in a new position. So it's dependent on its previous position because where you were, but it's randomly on what you roll. So, and you continue to do that throughout like a shoots and ladders game until you get to the end, that's your chain. So instead of shoots and ladders, we're doing it with parameters in our parameter selections. So that's our markup chain example. So, okay, but it's a little bit more complicated than that in, of course, uh, best fit. So let's use a simple game to illustrate how MCMC works. Um, again, if you notice in best fit, if you look at the options, it says, you know, we're running six chains at a time, not just one, we're running six. Um, so in this illustration, we're going to, we we're trying to, so we're going to kind of simulate this one with three chains here. So in this illustration, we're trying to find a hidden image. And best fit, the, the hidden pattern is the distribution of the parameter, 
or our frequency curve. So, so best fit uses a, it's called differential evolution MCMC or DEMC, which basically means we have multiple guessers called chains that can learn from previous guessers and learn from each other. The learning makes the process efficient. All right, so each chain or guess will initially make a random guess that's independent of each other. So each chain, right? So we got three different guesses here. With each guess, they check the fitness of their guess. In other words, did they find a part of the hidden image? They keep searching until something other than an X, in this example here, is found. So each chain or guesser, oops, each chain or guesser informs the other, and they all generally start to walk uh, or look in the same direction and same area until the the entire image is revealed. In other words, each guesser will converge to the to the correct answer, which in best fit is the posterior distribution of the frequency curve parameters for for the Bayesian theorem. And if you've looked at the Markov chains, it's not an exact answer. Remember, we're, it's converging to a sample space, a target distribution. It's an area in which we, we want to search. And so, all right. So this is a working example of MCMC. It's similar to differential evolution, but it's um, slightly different. So you can follow the link that's on this uh, slide if you ever want to go back and play with it. Um, and so in this figure on the left, you can see uh, the bivariate plot. The bivariate plot provides a visual, again, of the joint distribution for any two uh, parameters in the form of a heat map. And so this shows the relationship between those parameters. In this case, it shows a heat map for the standard deviation and mean. So in the figure on the right, uh, there are two plots. In the middle plot is a density function, which shows the frequency of all the samples. So it's going to be sampling along that, that that density function. So, and on the right most plot, we see um, each MCMC iteration as it's building its chain, as it's walking through. So the sample points um, are connected by a line called traces. So these three plots are connected. The individual points select from the far left bivariate figure correlate to the selected point on the middle density curve. As you might expect, notice that the sampling starts out um, selecting points much wider until it starts to converge a little bit more in the sample space. This process continues selecting new samples in its process to converge on the parameter set that, that fits the data best. So it's like a, su a survivor who goes looking for the top of a mountain, um, and it takes random elevation samples far apart so they can get the lay of the land. So then when it seems like they are getting um, a lot, getting lots of higher elevations, the survivor knows they are getting closer to the mountaintop, right? So then the survivor takes samples that are all pretty close together until they converge on that mountaintop or the most likely maximum elevation. So it's just our mountaintop is just an area that we want to search, <laughs> not exact point. So, all right, so here we see the equation for Bayes' theorem. So don't worry, you don't really have to get into the math too deeply. So we, can, we do that in that other class, the 216. So Bayes' theorem, again, has four basic terms. The numerator includes the prior information, which represents the prior parameter estimates as a probability distribution. The, the numerator also includes a likelihood function, which tells us um, how well the frequency curve uh, fits our input data. So that's the most like that's the likely. So the denominator um, is our normalizing constant. Um, it's the sum of the total likelihood of all the sample parameter sets. Um, in most cases, there's not going to be a closed form solution for this for this denominator. So that's why best fit uh, calculates the denominator using a, a numer numerical integration. That's that DEMC that uh, MCMC process we talked about. The left side of the equation back here. So the left side of the equation um, is the posterior distribution. So this is what we need to calculate our frequency curve for the uncertainty. So, all right. So now we're looking at best fit. So displays displayed here 
is the graphical user interface used in BestFit. You've been seeing this. BestFit offers a lot of control to the user for how to set up the Bayesian analysis. So, however, the good news is, like I said, BestFit provides default options for running the analysis that will provide good results right out of the box. So users don't users do not have to be experts in Bayesian analysis to use the software and particularly never have to really change the default um, simulation options if you don't want. So the, the default simulation options are set to ensure the model converges to a solution for most typical flood hazard applications. So these options allow the simulation to do um, a thorough search for the possible frequency curves that fit the input data, right? So there's should be two chains for each parameters. So that's why, you know, when we talk about using LP3, which has three parameters, you'll see six chains being used in your in the in the options. So the thinning interval minimizes the correlation between samples. Um, just briefly know that if you want to calculate credible intervals, uh, you have to have sampling error. Um, and with this chain, with the chain being real, remember you're, you're kind of dependent on that previous step. So every next thing you do is kind of correlated to the previous. So the intervals allow you to take every 20th, like by default, it's every 20th. And by doing that, you kind of keep the sampling error so you can get incredible intervals. Okay. So the warm up evolution gets the model pointed in the right direction so that the evolution, so you always got to give it a warm up period so you get through that initial guesses and then you're searching your target space so the advanced options here allow the users to change a lot of different things um, and we're not going to really go into a lot of that because that gets into a lot of the deeper bayesian estimation um, calculations but it's all there um, it's in the so usually you don't have to change any of this it's in some of the documentation if you want we go into some of it in the next class but it, it gets into the, the little bit more details, but it's all provided for you if you really want to change things up and, and see how it um, changes your answers. You can change those values and see what it does. So in the previous lecture, we discussed how to enter the observed systematic flow interval and perception threshold input data into BestFit. So now we can discuss additional hydrologic information in BestFit and how it can be incorporated into the flow frequency analysis. So the first type of GIN, uh, for informative prior, we'll discuss is the prior distribution for parameters. As you know, the, like we said, there's three parameters for LP3, the mean, standard deviation, and skew. Uh, when there's a re there's regional information available for any of these parameters, we can use that in the prior distribution. So most typical is the regional skew um, for providing information about that skew of it on, on that you're studying. So in other words, the regional skew estimate gives us some information about the value of skew at our site before we ever evaluate the input data. This figure um, shows an example for an, an informative prior distribution for a skew based on the skew estimate for a regional skew study and its mean squared error. So the yeah, the the blue curve is your prior density based on your regional skew, and then the the reddish curve is your posterior density given the data and your regional skew. So, it's common to assume a normal distribution when we're entering the regional skew information. The second type of information, uh, prior information, is considered causal information. So, recall from your college statistics course that. The word quantile means a uh, given annual exceedance probability or AEP, uh, such as like the 0 0.01 AEP quantile, uh, which is equivalent to the 100 year. So model, modeled flows or volumes based on the precipitation frequency curve like NOAA Atlas 14 combined with a rainfall runoff model like HEC HMS can be incorporated into a Bayesian analysis by defining a prior distribution for the flood quantile. Uh, this is done by entering an estimate of the flow or volume with uncertainty at a given AEP. Uh, for example, a precip frequencies um, based events uh, were, were developed using NOAA S14 and observed storm patterns. Uh, these events were then modeled and routed through a rainfall runoff analysis like HMS to a obtain an estimate of the volume. This approach is referred to as causal information expansion, 
which takes the generating mechanisms of a flood and the watershed of interest into account within the analysis, right? So um, one benefit of modeling regional rainfall frequency information is that it can improve our understanding of the shape of the upper right-hand tail of our frequency curve. So typically the rainfall runoff base quantile priors are entered as a normal distribution by providing the mean and standard deviation that's represented um, through the uncertainty in our analysis. So best fit has two options. The user can select one quantile prior or uh, a number of quantile priors based on the distribution that you've selected. So like with LP3, you would select, you can do one or three quantile priors. So the key assumption of the method is that the frequency of the flow and volume obtained from the model is equal to the frequency of the precipitation input into the model. This is only an approximation and generally works reasonably well for smaller watersheds, watersheds that have a drainage area of, of less than 1,000 square miles. So as a general best practice, if you're using NOAA Atlas 14 precipitation frequency for LP3, uh, the quantile priors that we usually use are the 10-year, 100-year, and 1,000-year return periods. So we don't typically extrapolate the NOAA Atlas 14 for this purpose. So precipitation frequency estimates from a site-specific or regional study can typically be extrapolated to less frequent annual exceedance probabilities. So there's more details on that later. All right, uh, several options are available, of course, to the user for output tab. Um, the user can specify the credible intervals uh, you can specify the output length, um, but these are pretty good defaults by standards. And then you can also in, uh, select which uh, output AEPs you want. So finally, the user can specify the, uh, again, those AEPs, sorry. So once everything is set, the Bayesian estimation analysis can be run um, by selecting the estimate button uh, under the general tab in the properties frame. So you've already done that several times. So I hope that makes sense. All right, when the Bayesian estimation analysis is complete, results will automatically be populated and updated in the graphical results tab, um, the tabular tab, and the parameter sets. Um, so again, here, the resulting flood frequency curve from the Bayesian estimation analysis is the, is the Bayesian estimation analysis. So again, like we talked about, the uh, black solid line is your posterior mode. Your blue is your posterior predictive, and then you have your Cranville intervals. All right, once the Bayesian estimation analysis is complete, BestFit provides several useful plots for diagnosis and diagnosing how well the selected parameters match the data. And this is called uh, the simulation convergence. BestFit also provides several tools for exploring the results. So let's kind of go through those real quick. So frequency plots is what you've basically been using up to this point. Um, this gives you all your posterior information along with all the, the stats and all your parameter sets. So if you clicked on that parameter set, you'd see all 10,000 uh, output parameter sets. Um, so you got your tabular data and, sorry, parameters. All right, so BestFit also provides several other tools for exploring the results for the Bayesian analysis. One of these is the kernel density plot, which can display the prior and posterior distributions for each parameter. You got histogram plots like this one. It's very similar to the kernel density. So the primary difference is that a kernel density plot is portrayed as a continuous function, and this was the discrete bars. And we've talked about there's the bivariate plot, which provides a visual of the joint distribution for any set of two parameters using a heat map. Uh, so this shows the relationship between those parameters. Uh, again, for example, here, the, the general diagonal pattern on the heat map shows how standard deviation is inversely related to skew. So the higher values of standard deviation correspond to lower skews and vice versa. So let's talk about the plot. It, so now let's talk about some of the plots that can be used for diagnosis. Um, the first plot is the mean likelihood. This plot shows the likelihood function has, uh, has a very wide range of values at the very beginning, right? We're searching randomly and then it, it, it solves down where it's, uh, it's really stable. 
Um, we have this one is for the autocorrelation. Again, if you select the very first of this, it's basically telling you that all your parameters are highly correlated, that we can't really do uncertainty, credible intervals with highly correlated data. So you want, it shows you uh, the 20th one, it's very, un, it's not correlated. And that's what our uncertainties are built, built off of. And then you have the Markovo chains in here, and this is our chain of information. You really wanna see it meshing real tight and almost at the, a blur in the middle. That just tells you that it's solving in the same distribution, same target area. 